Hey everyone, I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games Plus, and today I want to talk about some recent AI news that, to my mind, is reflective of some of the big concerns surrounding generative AI in the video games industry. We're going to talk about Stability AI, the creators of image generator Stable Diffusion. The focus isn't necessarily on the company itself, but rather how their recent fortunes are emblematic of a larger problem surrounding a lot of AI companies at the moment. Perhaps more critically, for this audience, I'm going to dig into how these issues are going to be a problem in game development. So yes, on to the story. UK-based Stability AI made headlines in the past couple of weeks courtesy of a deep dive expose by Forbes. While the crux of the story was about Stability AI's founder, Imad Mostak, the more interesting headline for me was with regards to the company's finances. You can get into the details via the Forbes article or the register if you prefer, I'll provide the links in the description. But the real story for me was how the company spent close to 160 million only to bring in revenues of approximately 11 million. I'm no mathematician, I mean I'm a computer scientist which makes me a lazy mathematician, but those numbers just don't stack up. Now if we dig into it a little bit deeper, we see that this breaks down into two distinct areas. First, there was the salary costs for all of Stability's staff, which cost around $54 million. And then secondly, the cost of hosting, training and providing access to all of their AI models at around $99 million. Now, I'm not going to decry anyone for getting that nice big pay packet. AI is a hot topic right now, you do you. But the cost of their AI models, largely from hosting them on Amazon Web Services, is as staggering as it is commonplace. The cost of hosting for one year at Stability may be in part due to the company's rather unfocused business strategy. Again, see the Forbes article for more on that, but it is reflective of the market and the technology as a whole. By the way, for anyone keen to do the math, that $99 million equates to around $270,000 a day for all of their work in building a variety of generative AI models. And it is worth stating that Stable Diffusion is not the only model that Stability AI develop. They have a variety of models for generating images, video, audio, 3D models, and also a number of large language models that are in their portfolio. But it's also not uncommon for these larger companies to be footing that kind of web hosting bill. Last year, estimates suggested that OpenAI must spend around $700,000 a day to host the GPT language model, which going the other way is about $255 million a year. Now, why are these numbers so astronomically large? I'm throwing these numbers around like they're confetti, but at the end of the day, that's a lot of money for something whose quality could be easily justified as variable. Naturally, I'm not privy to the inner workings of these businesses, but it's worth highlighting that hosting and training many generative models is prohibitively expensive due to the sheer size and scale of them. Given the number of parameters utilised in these models, they are typically hundreds of gigabytes in size and require processing capability far beyond individual computers to run, much less train, in a practical time frame. Hence the reliance on things like Amazon Web Services, rather than building up your own cloud compute infrastructures. Similarly, this requirement is why many third-party generative AI tools, such as Jasper and Chibi AI, are effectively wrappers for the likes of GPT and Stable Diffusion, given it's more cost-effective to interface with these existing systems and try to get them to do which your product advertises than training your own models entirely from scratch for your own use case. And so, yeah, it's very expensive. But what does all of this have to do with games? Well, there's three things I really want to unpack here. Stability AI is indicative of many a generative AI company that's unlikely to turn a profit anytime soon, many of which will require further investment to build a strong ROI and survive the coming years. With increasing regulation on the horizon, be it on platforms or at national and international level, generative AI companies are going to need to adapt to survive. And then lastly, video games are a long-term financial proposition and are therefore incredibly risk-averse as they attempt to weather dynamic and volatile tech markets. And so the question is, how can generative AI truly make an impact in the games industry if the companies pioneering the sector are increasingly unlikely to survive the duration of a single AAA games project timeline? Now, as always, I come across as a bit of a cynic when it comes to generative AI for games, when the truth is I'm more of a cautious optimist. I see the potential of this technology in the future, but right now there is simply too much risk for many game developers to consider adopting it within their pipeline. 
It's worth stressing, before I dig into this further, that it does not mean that companies are not exploring it in detail. Just last week, I discussed Ubisoft's Neo NPC, which relied on conversational AI powered by InWorld. Plus, at GDC 2024, we had companies such as Keyword Studios talking about their work to build entire games using only generative tools. This particular example, Project Ava, is notable in that the stu studio successfully built a relatively small, albeit complete game, and they have zero intent of releasing it at this current time, given the legal and ethical issues that it raises. Outside of this, every AAA developer I talk to is experimenting with their own tools and systems derived from generative AI technologies, but the risks involved are simply too much to consider in use in production at scale. Risk is a very ugly word to throw around in video games, because the industry is incredibly risk-averse. While we see a myriad of diverse and exciting games emerging across the sector, with creatively rich titles such as Bellatro breaking 1 million sales, and even recently games like Viewfinder and Vemba receiving awards at the BAFTA Games event, the majority of the industry is very mindful of the types of games it's making or funding and the costs that incurs. If we consider a list of what are the biggest critical and commercial AAA titles of 2024, like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Dragon's Dogma 2, Tekken 8, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Persona 3 Reload and Helldivers 2, they all have several traits in common. First of all, they're all either sequels or remakes of existing IP. And for context, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the second entry of a planned trilogy of remakes to the 1997 game Final Fantasy VII, Persona 3 Reload is a ground-up remake of a game from 2006. And of course, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is confusingly the ninth mainline entry of the Yakuza series. The franchise is now embracing the translation of its Japanese name, uh, Ryuga Gotoku, for more recent titles. Now, there are the second thing is they're all taking established concepts and ideas from the industry and reworking them to modern sensibilities and audiences. And then thirdly, they all had extensive multi-year development life cycles. For context, Helldivers 2 was confirmed to have taken just shy of eight years to build, and that was eight years well spent in the pursuit of democracy. Meanwhile, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came to market four years after its predecessor, Final Fantasy VII Remake and it was actually in development as early as 2019. Now, it's this latter point that underpins the risks of generative AI when it is provided by outside vendors. There are a whole bunch of issues I don't want to get into today, given I simply don't have time, notably things like protection of intellectual property rights, ownership and copyright of generated assets, reliability of generated output in context of platforms and age ratings, plus, of course, the legal issues of generative AI providers and the ethical issues packed in with that. Today, my focus is on something highly game-specific, technical debt and production timelines. As games move into full production, there is a huge emphasis on minimizing risk in all facets of the pipeline. Critically, this includes all of the technical components. This can include the primary game engine being adopted, be it in-house or third party, the proposed platforms for launch, given they will influence the overall technical budgets, the middleware and tools utilized for development, and much, much more. A lot of generative AI adoption I see when working with studios tends to fall into early ideation and iteration phases, meaning that it's designed to help speed up that early phase of development. It's not used when the team gets into the meat of the production, and there's a number of issues that have led to this particular conclusion, not just from me, but from what I'm seeing across the board in the industry. First of all, that the tools don't fit the needs of the development process and pipeline. And critically, they're not good enough to merit a change to an established process. It doesn't feel like the tool is sufficiently confident enough to merit us completely changing how we make this particular part of the game. Secondly, the tools are often provided without an enterprise license, meaning studios repeatedly have to bill for monthly subscriptions and don't own the copy of the tool outright. That is actually something that most studios don't like. And then critically, most generative AI tools are hosted on third-party web platforms, meaning the studio is reluctant for two reasons. First, that their assets are going to be submitted to a third party who perhaps they do not trust with their intellectual property. And then secondly, I think even more critically, in the event the third party goes out of business, the tool is no longer available and ultimately useless. Stories such as Stability AI having financial troubles only help reinforce this concern. Game studios need partners to be in business for years to help build their internal expertise of those tools and systems and, and rely on their external support. Then, in the event things go south, 
The tool could still be used without the support of the original provider if that experience is baked into the team and they have ownership of the tool. Perhaps one of the best examples of this in recent years is the release of Helldivers 2, released in February of this year, and of course 2022's Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Both games were developed and brought to market using the Autodesk Stingray game engine. This is particularly notable given Autodesk discontinued support for the engine in 2018. Hellnivers 2 is a great example of a studio utilising a now defunct tool to release a product without support of the tool's creators and relying on their own internal skill set. And it does sound incredibly risky, but it fits with their own existing expertise and pipeline such that they could go ahead with it. And both studios in this case, both Arrowhead Game Studios, first for Helldivers and Fat Shark on, on Darktide, have released multiple games using this engine, meaning they know it well and are willing to commit to it despite its dis discontinuation. And also probably the engine source was available to them and that would allow them to modify and extend it in ways that made sense, rather than them being locked out of the tool by Autodesk when they decided to discontinue their support for it. Now compare this to an external generative AI tool that is accessible only via a web API or similar web page. Once those servers go down, the tool is dead. If a studio cannot see the viability of your tool in the worst case scenario of you going bust, then their willingness to adopt it will reduce drastically. So what does all of this mean in the grand scheme of things? Critically, we need to see more generative AI providers show not only that they have a stable business model and are capable of growth, but they are capable of providing support for studios in ways that better align with production risks. Can they provide full source code access to the model? Can they offer better offline tooling? Anything that allows for studios to see a viable way to continue to use that offering in the event things go horribly wrong for the original vendor. Stability AI's recent financial difficulties highlight that its rise to prominence and then potential collapse could have occurred in less time than it took to make Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. If a tool provider cannot convince a studio that they're going to survive their production timeline, what chance do they really have of being adopted? Anyway, I've finished ranting. That's all from me today here on AI and Games Plus. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll be back soon. Stay safe. Take care, I'll be back.